Uh, so first up, uh, we have Zim from University Campus Holden. And you have five minutes. Zim. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, my name's Tim, and I am from University Camp Solvent, this beautiful snowy paradise. And that's the slide here. It's not snowy in Auburn today, but it's not about anything anyway. Um, I'm going to very briefly talk about UCO, just to introduce us, because it makes some sense of sort of context in how we teach summer. Um, UCO is a partnership between the Auburn College and the University of Huddersfield. So uh, the college runs the campus, but the course is accredited by the University of Huddersfield. Uh, and because of that, uh, basically UCO students are Huddersfield students, so they have access to some and they have access to all of Huddersfield's e-resources. Um, we've got about 660 students this year at UCO, slightly more a few years ago, and they are looking to get the numbers up again. But we've got quite a diverse range of courses offered at UCO, probably our largest cohort is education, then probably helps community studies, law, um, as a subject librarian, I support all of these subject areas and I do the information scholarship for all of these areas, which is a bit of a challenge um, and, um, you know, there's obviously varying sort of needs that these students have. Um, we do use some as the starting point for all of these subject areas, apart from law, as people have been talking about earlier in the day. Um, information skills for law are still based around Lexis and Westlaw, but I do show that the students some as well. Uh, because as people have discussed with me today, it's a really good single search of all our other resources on all our other subject areas. Thank you for the, the hint. Um, so basically, for the um, for information skills sessions for first years, what I always ask to do is um, I always ask for the assignments um, which the students are doing, tailor the information skills sessions around that. Um, it just lets you won't give you the details of what the assignments what I want to do in the session for. Um, and then basically use that as a starting point and get the students started on things like identifying key points and alternatives, planning their information search. Don't start with someone, we'll bring that in later on. And then all the time, um, because we'll look at freely available web resources, a lot of our subjects areas like health, like education, there's lots of really good information online which those students will want to use, need to be able to use. So we'll kind of look at things like that and then bring in some after that. So then we've already basically done some thinking about um, choosing information sources and then I can say, and now actually we've got this academic search engine summary which we'll use, you know, which is good, highly uh, good quality information. Uh, and then I return to other databases if that's relevant. But we, yeah, we start with some, so we'll get straight to the demo of it. Um, and we use basically Huddersfield's platform for summon, it's exactly the same as theirs. Um, and I'll start really basic. As people have been talking earlier today, you know, treat it like Google. Don't scare your students. So basically, just say, yeah, single search box. Let's start with searching for something. Well, I'm looking for reflective practice. Uh, oh, I can never type when people are watching. So immediately, I start typing reflective practice. It's just like Google that you're used to. It's going to make suggestions. Um, reflection in nursing. Maybe that's something we'd be interested in if we're doing a health and community studies students. But we'll just start with reflective practice. Choose that. Um, oh. and this is when I can't click on anything. Oh, right. Reflective practice, 64,000 results. It's never a problem with someone getting a volume of results. It's what you do afterwards to make sure you get the most relevant stuff. So basically, that's nice, you know, from the get-go, saying, yeah, we got access to loads of stuff there. Because of the particular context at UCO, um, our students can use Huddersfield Library but they may not want to go all the way over to Huddersfield. So the first thing I get them to do is to click on things, items and full text online. And you normally try and make a little bit of a challenge. So we've got 64,000 results here available electronically. How many do we think are going to be available electronically? Sorry, I said that wrong. 64,000 results in total. How many do you think will be electronically? Guesses? You saw. Oh, um, 50,000. 50, is higher, lower? Yeah. Lower? <laughs> Lower, higher. Well, actually, this is when you can use the amazing psychic powers. 57,000 results, I think. 59,000 results. <laughs> um, but generally, you get actually feel, after a while, of actually guessing how many you're going to get anyway, it always tends to be some sort of percentage, so you don't actually always have to plan it in advance. You can just look amazing and guess it <laughs> which is pretty good. And then basically, because our students were saying, use these facets at the size, refine your search. We actually find our students do make use of those facets a lot. We don't have to try and convince them to. They're very used to doing that. 
Um, are students like using Linux Lite and calls with scholarly publications, including peer review? I often find when I sit down with students, they're doing that. I prefer not to do that. I prefer to, to use it by journal article as a type later on, because it's not limiting it. It's not guaranteeing their peer review. But if that's what they like using, that's what they like using. I'm not going to tell them that's wrong. They find that useful. You know, I do it another way. And it's, that's what it's like. It's customization. It's using those facets to get the results that work for you. Um, I don't basically spend too much time showing what to do, apart from sort of by order, by date. If some subject area's relevance is really, really important. So we can sort those in date orders. So we've still got 59,000 e results, and now we're in date order. That might be useful to you. And then just get them to space experiment with the facets. I tend to give them about 15 minutes to play around with it, to see what they get, and then come back, and then take what they've been doing and the similar thing mistakes they've been making, because often they will, they'll type their entire uh, assignment question in there to show them why that doesn't work. Um, I do tend to show them how to search within ebooks as well. That's something they find very useful. It's how to be general on someone, then when you log into an ebook, then you can even for specific searchable text of the ebook. I think I'm about to be dragged off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.